So if you were to ask me, Louie, which one are you going to get? The 500 or the 350? I'm going to have to go with... Alright, so let's talk about if the IS500 is worth the $15,000 price difference as opposed to the 350. So in this video, we're going to be comparing the Lexus IS350 and the Lexus IS500. Am I going to get the naturally aspirated V6 350 or am I going to get the naturally aspirated V8 500? Now, as I mentioned already, the main thing to think about is the price. So for the 2024 models, from what I've seen online, the 500 they have starting for around $60,000. For the IS350, they got that starting at around $45,000, with the all-wheel drive model starting at around forty-seven. dollars Now, if all-wheel drive is what you're looking for, you can stop the video now. You only have one option. What? The 350 is the only model that has the option to get all-wheel drive. But you should keep watching because, you know, there's a few more things to talk about. Really, there's not too many things to talk about, though, because as far as the looks go, these cars look exactly the same. If you guys know of any differences, please educate me down below in the comments. But obviously, I've had the pleasure of driving both vehicles seeing both vehicles and i haven't seen any differences from the inside to the outside from the interior to the exterior i have not noticed any differences aside from the badges that's the only way you're going to be able to distinguish the 350 from the 500 because visually as you can see there's really no differences now, I don't know if there's a different hood on the 500. There might be. Now that I think about it, maybe there's a different hood or something like that. But, I mean, not too many people care about the hood. And does that justify $15,000? No, I don't think so. But, obviously, the main reason for that $15,000 difference is not in the looks. It's going to be in the performance. It's going to be in the engines in particular. So, as we already stated... The 350, which I'm sitting in at the moment, has the naturally aspirated V6, and the 500 has the naturally aspirated V8. I don't know the horsepower differences off the top of my head, but you can see them here on the screen. Now, I've had the pleasure of driving both, obviously, or why would I be making this video? And the, the big question is, is there that much of a difference? Now, first of all, I will say, in my opinion, going for this type of vehicle, I'm not going to get a Lexus IS350 or an IS500 with the intention that I, I want to go fast. You know, that's just, you know, that's never where my mind's gone. Now, obviously, with the aftermarket talks, you know, you guys can educate me on the potential of these vehicles. I'm sure there is some potential there. But if we're just talking about stock, for me, I've never thought to myself, hmm, I want to go in a fast car maybe i should get a lexus no now i've always liked the look of the lexus and i love the reliability of the lexus and the overall quality of these builds and just the overall performance in general you know these are amazing cars but as far as speed goes it's not the car that comes to mind so right off the bat for me speed isn't really the main factor so that's already a point in the direction of the 350. All right, so real quick, before we go any further, because I know I'm going to get some backlash in the comments for that statement right there. I'm not saying that these cars are particularly slow. You know, obviously you got the RCF um, and even the IS500, it's not a slow car. But when compared to something like a Scat or a Camaro or a Mustang or, you know, some of these other V8s out there, it definitely doesn't have the torque of a Scat. I could tell you that. Um... And I'm pretty sure the Scat would be faster, so of course the Camaro is going to be faster, and the Mustang. And I'm pretty sure that all of those cars are cheaper than the IS500 as well. Could be mistaken, I haven't checked the prices of the Scat and the Mustang and the Camaro nowadays. I know prices have gone up. I know back when I got my 2020 Scat, it was way cheaper than, I think they're in the 60s now, which is kind of close to the is 500 but um, at the same time then you got to talk about reliability of the Lexus. You're not getting that with any other car that i just brought up so um but just talking about speed alone 
in my opinion, I could be wrong. I don't think it's competing with those other V8s. So again, I'm not saying that the car is slow. The car is super dope, you know, and I'd love to drive it again, uh, one that's broken in. And I would also let, love to see the aftermarket potential of it. And the look of it is so sick. So I'm not trying to shit on the IS500 in any way. I'm simply saying me, myself, personally, when I think about speed, when I, when I was thinking about what car should I get, you know, which V8 should I get, the, the Lexus didn't really come to mind. But then again, I was kind of sleeping on the Lexus because when considering aftermarket and everything else, it sounds amazing. Dare I say, it sounds better than any of the other V8s. And I know this is surprising coming from me. I know if you guys are subscribed to my channel for the Scat Pack videos that I used to do, I used to think that was the best sounding V8. But I recently seen a video of all the V8s compared to, and even like other cars were in there, but I was, I'm mainly thinking of the V8s, the Camaro, the Mustang, the Scat, even the Hellcat was in there. And the, the Lexus, I don't, I don't know if it was the 500, it might've been the RCF, but that V8 that was in there, that sounded the best out of all of them. I don't know, I might've had a, uh, an upgraded exhaust, but I need to so find that. That's going to be a whole separate video. I need to find that clip and we're going to do a video on the best sounding V8s out of all those and which one I would choose now. And it could be faster than those other cars once you do some stuff to it. So I don't know, you guys let me know, educate me down below in the comments. Now, the difference between the two in speed, I will say that the 350 that I'm in right now, you know, we've had the chance to break it in. Once you break it in, the car opens up a little bit more. So, you know, we've seen the full potential stock in this car. Um, and you know, it's no slouch. It does what it needs to do. It's a fun car um, With the 500 that when I drove it was brand new, you know, so we didn't get to break it in I didn't get to see the full potential of it after it was already broken in um, But as far as my experience with the two Was there that much of a difference? I mean, I can't say that there was a crazy difference between the two um, as far as the sound goes you guys can see here They both sound really good. You know, I love the sound of these naturally aspirated V6 and V8 engines. The sound to me, it wasn't that drastic. Now the speed difference, that wasn't really that drastic either. You know, the 500, it was obviously faster. Um, it obviously had a bit more acceleration and things of that nature. But you know, for the $15,000 price difference and for the fact that I stated before that I'm not getting into this type of car, strictly for the speed of these vehicles you know to me that really doesn't justify fifteen thousand dollars for the difference that i felt personally so if you were to ask me louis which one are you gonna get the 500 or the 350 i'm gonna have to go with the 350. you know and i'm not being biased you know that is my honest opinion i would just personally go with the 350 because I'm getting this car for the reliability, which they both have. I'm getting this car for the performance, obviously, which they both have. I'm getting this car for the quality and I'm getting it for the looks, which they both have. Yes, you get a little bit more of the performance in the 500, but to me, it's not a $15,000 difference performance, you know, um, so. All right, again. Let me just say, because I know I'm probably going to get some backlash from that statement. If you have the money, then go ahead and get the 500. You know, you want the extra power. You don't care. You got money to blow. Obviously, get the 500. I'm not really coming from that standpoint. I'm coming from the standpoint of, you know, your average everyday consumer, your average consumer. They're going to want to know, is that power difference from the V6 to the V8 because that's the only difference, aside from the hood, is that enough to justify $15,000? From my experience, from what I remember, I don't, think, I don't think it is. I don't think it's that much of a difference. So, I don't know, that's just my opinion. To me, the 350 is more than enough for what I want it for. If I do want more speed, like I mentioned before, we could go to the aftermarket and we could add more speed, but that's not what I'm really looking to do with this car. To me, it's just a, if you want a high quality vehicle that's gonna retain its value, 
you're really not beating Lexus. This car is going to retain its value better than 9 out of 10 cars on the market. But y'all let me know what you think. Do you agree with me or are you going to go with the 500?